My name is Dr. Lisa Detter Hoskin, and I work here at the Georgia Tech Research Institute Material Analysis Center. And what my job involves is I actually am a group leader of a laboratory that tests samples, and those samples can be made of pretty much anything. We do a lot of paper, paints, uh, metals, but we like to say we don't test blood and we don't test guts. So our job is basically what we call materials forensics or failure analysis. Um, I went from Susquehanna University with a, with a Bachelor of Arts degree in chemistry and a, and a minor in math. And I went on to Purdue University and um, selected PhD in inorganic chemistry. And that took me four and a half years to finish. My undergraduate was three and a half years. And I went back to school nights at Southern Tech, which is now Southern Polytechnic State University, and I got a management of technology degree. I always liked science and math, and I knew that I liked testing. I knew that I liked synthesis. I knew that I um, liked environmental work, and I liked problem solving. The most rewarding part of my career is uh, my job is always different. And secondly, I like the academic environment. The most stressful part is being able to find funding or money to keep my group afloat. A typical day can be very varied when you do forensics work. You may get a call at 4 o'clock in the morning that there's been a train wreck in South Carolina. I need to pack my bags and take my testing kit. I go in and collect samples and document the forensics part of what we call field testing. Another day I may wake up and come to the lab and I may have to sit and look at research proposals. Other days I may be asked to um, go brief potential new government cus customers about some new methods that we might develop for them. Other days I may be sitting at an instrument turning knobs generating data. Another day I may have students come through and I would give an educational tour. Um, other days I might be asked to guest lecture over at Georgia Tech have a bachelor's degree, you'll probably start out around $45,000. Um, after about 10 years experience, you'll probably go to 65. If you come out with a master's degree, you'll probably start about 65 and in 10 years you'll probably be at about 85. If you come in with a PhD, you'll probably start about 65 to 80 and in 10 years you can be making about 115, 120,000. But once you get a lot of expertise. You can become what's classified as an expert and you can begin to work on expert legal cases and when you do that you can substantiate your salary another hundred thousand dollars a year if you want to. There is room to rise in the ranks and you have it you have a, a, a two-prong way of doing that. You can rise in the research rung. You start in as a technician or a um, junior scientist and then you can move to senior scientist up to principal and I'm a principal research scientist. From there you go to chief scientist and then you would go to a director status. Um, if you want to go in the management side then there's a management rung that you can move up as well. We took all the math we could take. We took physics, um, you need to take biology and you need to take all the chemistry and if you can get the opportunity to do some statistics that's also very good and um, I would also recommend a language. German and Latin um, is, are perhaps the most helpful. I believe that forensics has changed. The equipment has become more sophisticated. Forensics has become much more statistical and much more standardized. The technician and entry level positions are very saturated, but I believe that if you really enjoy science and engineering and you get a master's or a Ph. degree, there'll always be a demand for the very high level folks to continue to run the groups or to develop new scientific breakthroughs. Do what you love. Don't do what your parents or your grandparents want you to do. Um, understand that when you go to school, you never have to have all the answers figured out when you're 18. 